What's good everyone? It's your boy Nazi with another video for the channel. Welcome back to the NB Sports Zone. And as you can tell by the title of this video, we'll be talking about the Cole Beasley stuff, news, whatever you want to call it, that went down on Twitter yesterday afternoon and pretty much into the evening hours. And um we'll be talking about it. First and foremost, I hate that the issue that we're gonna talk about today has become politicized and I mean, we're talking about public health, for goodness sakes. This shouldn't be a political issue whatsoever, but apparently it has become one here in the U.S., and I understand the risk that's going to come with making this video, and there's probably going to be some dislikes, um, maybe some not-so-nice comments, and I, I understand that, but just please let me get this out there because I've been sitting on this for the last day and um, sort of did not want to give an immediate reaction but wanted to give the reaction now. And first and foremost, with Cole Beasley... I'll say this, a lot of people even on Twitter yesterday and maybe some of you all who are watching this video for the first time might not really know who Cole Beasley is. So I do want to give this man his flowers for his on-field production. I mean, 82 catches, 967 yards for four touchdowns last year, arguably one of the best slot receivers in the league, was part of arguably one of the best wide receiving duos with our boy from the DMV community and Stephon Diggs from um, Montgomery County, Maryland more specifically. So. I think he's super underrated and he is a very good slot receiver in this league. So I'm, I'm saying all this to show you guys that he does have some stature uh, in this league and does have some followers on social media and stuff. So he's basically putting this message out there, not just for himself or for his immediate family or for his immediate community, but also for hundreds and thousands of people out there to pretty much absorb over the last 24 hours plus. But with Cole Beasley, though, I will say this, with the remarks that he made yesterday, if you've been following what he's been saying on social media for months now, since really the vaccine has been developed and has started getting distributed among the uh, general population, he's had these feelings for a very long time. And uh, yesterday, obviously, had that long post that has been going crazy on on the, uh, the Twitter app. And um, yeah, so we'll be talking about that. Today, COVID-19 vaccine, man, COVID-19 vaccine. I'll say this though, a lot of people get the safety of this vaccine misconstrued. And I think Cole Beasley kind of did over the last couple of months, a little bit less so in that long post that we obviously all saw yesterday or most of us saw yesterday. With the COVID-19 vaccine, I want to first get this out there because I did actually take a class a couple months ago on vaccines, on pandemics on public health in general during pandemics and uh, definitely learned a lot through those classes. So I'm definitely coming into this video with some experience, right, with vaccines and some knowledge about them. So, I mean, you guys can take that with a grain of salt, but I did definitely wanted to give you guys that up front. And um, yeah, man, I just, to put it bluntly, I just did not agree with this comment. Obviously, Cole Beasley, right? Anybody who makes comments about the COVID-19 vaccine and not wanting to take it is totally right to, to say it, right? Obviously, they have the freedom to do so. It is America. Like, you can do it. You had the freedom to do it. And I mentioned this on a previous live stream in response to Montez Sweat's comments, which were pretty similar a couple of weeks ago after a mandatory minicamp practice where he basically balked at the idea of taking the COVID-19 vaccine, even after Coach Ron Rivera brought in vaccine experts to sort of sway maybe a little bit or at least educate players on why taking the vaccine is sort of needed at this point and he balked at the idea and um mentioned this in a previous live stream but yeah i'm just not <laughs> i just don't necessarily like the comments and um with the activity yesterday on twitter again this this is not a one-off thing cole beasley has felt this way for a long time again he's totally totally right for him to do so but um i definitely think a lot of the points specific points that he brought up in that long quote-unquote public service announcement that he had yesterday definitely deserves some pushback first and foremost he started off the tweet by saying i'm going to live my one life like i want to again it is america you can do that luckily right like we're not in another country um that you can't do that in which i think we're all blessed to uh to have that experience or to have that to be able to say that and obviously even with the idea of putting foreign substances into the body we all there have the right to reject that right my body my choice right um and uh so i don't have a problem with that 
the, the issue that I have with this comment is the idea that the repercussions of not getting vaccinated is solely focused or solely on the person, right? Only on the individual. When the truth of the matter is that the repercussions are widespread, right? It's in one's community. It's in pretty much anybody that that unvaccinated person meets, right? And um, I get this idea as well, and I mentioned this on a previous live stream as well. At this point, this is a totally valid claim. If you're not vaccinated, right, you're probably not going to get vaccinated. And it is on you if an unvaccinated person meets up with another unvaccinated person and potentially gets that unvaccinated person sick. So, right, like it is on you. You have some personal responsibility there. But my issue is where, and I mentioned this actually on a tweet, a comment to a Burgundy Zones tweet, which you guys should check out. Very good podcast out there. I mentioned this, but I'll say this here. What about people who have a underlying medical condition or are immunosuppressed, right? And need this pandemic to be over with as soon as possible so that they can get back to their normal lives, right? Should we just throw their lives out the window and not really care one lick <laughs> about their lives and, and them being able to live comfortably? I get it. We all have personal freedom, right? This is America. Once again, this is the third time I'm saying that. I get it. I really do. But I think we should also care about other people, right? I think that's sort of the moral thing to do. And, um, and I also get that Cole Weasley being unvaccinated for him. He's a top-notch athlete. Obviously, even if he does contract the COVID-19 virus, he likely won't get too sick, if sick at all, right? So again, for him, the effects are probably not too big and uh, maybe even for some members of his family. But again, I always think about the most vulnerable in a lot of situations. I mean, if you want to talk about the criminal justice system, which, you know, I'm pretty pretty passionate about in terms of reforming that system or really anything in life. I'm always thinking about the most vulnerable populations. And I think COVID-19 and vaccinations, I think I, I, I'm pretty much sticking with that now. And, um, and then there's another sentiment that he made on the whole, I think it was like a two-sided uh, basic like Twitter thread that he had. And he made the sentiment that I'm not going to take meds for a leg that isn't broken as sort of justification for not taking the COVID-19 vaccine. And again, this is very similar, as I mentioned earlier on the channel, that Montez Sweat said a couple of weeks ago in, re in response to a reporter asking him if he's going to get vaccinated or he thought the idea of bringing vaccine experts was a good idea for the Washington football team. And um, while I get it, again, he's a super superior athlete won't really have to deal with you know the serious consequences of COVID-19 likely right the consequences again it's not just for himself it's for his general community for other people and the ripple effect is definitely there in my opinion and I can you can say the same about other athletes as well it's not just a Cole Beasley thing and he even mentioned this in his comments a lot of athletes feel the same way that he does right they just aren't as vocal and I'll get to a little bit of the reasoning behind that later in this video, but um, you can even bring up guys like LeBron James, for example, right, who I respect, and you guys, if you've seen my previous videos, you know I respect a lot for his, uh, his stances on certain issues, and, you know, obviously most of the time he's been on the right side, in my opinion, on certain issues, but sometimes he hasn't. But anyways, regardless, I respect him, right, and, and him standing up for certain issues. But for a guy like LeBron James of that stature, right, as another superior athlete, not really talking about vaccinations or, I mean, the truth of the matter is he's probably unvaccinated. He is very uncomfortable with asking or answering any questions pertaining to the vaccine. I just think when you have a platform like that, when you have a stature like that, saying you're unvaccinated, again, obviously there's a health consequence, right? Like you're gonna affect other people, not just yourself but also spewing the message out there that you are anti-vaccine, right? Not just hesitant to take the vaccine, but pretty much anti-vaccine, anti-COVID-19 vaccine to be more specific. I just think that messaging is pretty problematic, especially when you consider the fact that we are in a global pandemic where we need to get as many people vaccinated as possible. Just that's the truth of the matter, right? For us to get out of this because herd immunity at this point, guys, if we're gonna be honest, it's gonna be tough to get, right? Because obviously if you consider science, you need to get to a certain threshold in order to have that herd immunity. And if we get more people being swayed by athletes or celebrities who don't want to get vaccinated, not just that, but are 
anti-vaccine and it might be problematic and we might be in this thing for for several months now right or at least as a nation, right, including unvaccinated people. For vaccinated people, if you're fully vaccinated, you likely can do, like myself, you likely can do a lot of things that unvaccinated people can do right now without having an increased risk of contracting COVID-19 or at least an increased risk of getting seriously sick from COVID-19. But, and also with this point as well, with the whole, I'm not gonna take meds for a leg that isn't broken, is it just me or do preventive measures actually reduce harm more in any situation in life than treatment measures, right, that are taken after the fact, right, after a given situation, right? Like, say, wearing a seatbelt, and I know this is a common example that's, that was running throughout Twitter yesterday, but wearing a seatbelt to lower the odds of one getting seriously injured after a car accident, or, say, exercising over your lifetime so that your body is right, and you won't really have to worry about contracting chronic diseases over the course of your life, and ultimately having to take medications later to just really survive, right? So I think preventive measures in the case of vaccines is no different. I think there's a reason why vaccines have uh, been taken over the course of history and um, they've been powerful, right? Remember talking about viruses like measles and um, smallpox, chickenpox, whatever. Like oftentimes vaccines has helped us get through those situations and has left pretty much rendered those viruses like obsolete if we're, if we're really thinking about things right over the course of history. Another point that Beasley made in that big Twitter post yesterday that I'm not, I want to talk a little bit more about because I feel like a lot of, especially myself as a devout Christian, I feel like other Christians are probably thinking this way as well. The idea that we shouldn't put too much trust in science and that we should put more trust in God's will and that everything will be okay and everything is in accordance to God's plan. So if we get sick, we get sick. It is what it is. Well, I understand where Beasley is coming from on this point. Again, as a devout Christian myself, and as one who firmly believes God has a plan for anything and everything in our lives, God also teaches us, and a lot of people forget this, to help others and reduce as much unnecessary harm as possible. And I think, again, as I mentioned earlier, I think the vaccine falls into this category. I saw a recent post from BioLogos, who is actually, which is actually a great Christian advocacy organization, by the way, that pretty much detailed my feelings on this. Uh, they pretty much refer to how God commands us that in relationships, in our relationships with one another, we have to have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, right? We have to pretty much take on the very nature of a servant and really not just look at our own interests, and but look at in the interests of others. And I don't really think that's just a Christian thing or even a religion thing. That's just the, the moral thing, right? That's the right thing to do that we've been taught over years. Um, and while obviously you have the idea of like the sanctity of the body and not messing with it whatsoever because it is a gift that us Christians believe and really any religious person believes is handed down from God. We need to recognize that we need to help our community, right? We need to help our community as uh, Christ pretty much put us on the earth to do so. And I think, again, the vaccine falls into this category and not just COVID-19 vaccine, but vaccines in general. Because again, I think about the most vulnerable in any situation. And I think the people who are immunocompromised who can't get the vaccine are definitely at risk and will continue to be at risk for as long as people just don't get vaccinated. And um, another point that I didn't want to mention, I would be remiss if I didn't mention this because it is Juneteenth when I'm recording this. And while this doesn't really pertain to the Cole Beasley situation, but does more so with the Montez Sweat situation or with the idea of NFL players, black players, and just black people in general being more hesitant to, to uh, getting the vaccine and, and vaccinations in general, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that, you know, there is some validity to the current lack of trust in vaccines and getting it. And obviously there's a long history of vaccine experimentation in this country, particularly on black bodies. And well, obviously I care about that. I mean, I, I care about that a lot, right? Um, I, I, I get it. With the COVID-19 vaccine, well, obviously there was an expedited process for it to get approved. It did still go through several vaccine trials before ultimately getting approved. And I know a lot of people talk about how, obviously when you have money hungry pharmaceutical companies out there that 
won't necessarily do what's right for the public, but would just do what's right for their pocketbooks. Obviously, that concern is valid, but when you have an FDA, when you have an agency like that, that sort of serves as a gatekeeper and essentially approves the, the vaccine, right, and ensures that it is safe enough for the public to take it, I think for me and I think for a lot of people out there, that should be enough for you to ultimately take the vaccine. And um, now, of course, there are other problems with the with healthcare and the medical industry that needs to be confronted head on when it comes to the black community, right? The lack of trust that, again, stems from that long history of experimentation and just not really being neglected by the healthcare industry. I think when it comes to this COVID-19 vaccine, which is the main topic of this video, it's been deemed safe, right? It's been deemed safe and we should try our best to get vaccinated. And that's pretty much what I'm gonna leave the video off with right leave you guys all off with obviously it's a personal choice right anybody could take the vaccine anybody could choose not to take the vaccine and i'm not telling you guys that uh you know there should be any sort of vaccine mandate like everyone should take it but when it comes to private companies like the nfl for example who are putting forth these protocols that guys like cole beasley are very uncomfortable with i mean they're also in their in the right to do so as well, right? They are a private company. They are not the government, right? They can make mask mandates. They can make vaccine mandates. And it's up to them. It's up to them to do so. But I guess, again, the general idea here is to get vaccinated if you can. And uh, Cole Beasley, don't necessarily, I respect you as a player and all of you that you've done for the NFL and stuff, but don't necessarily agree with your comments. And but I want to hear from you guys, what your guys' thoughts are on his comments. And I, I know there's probably going to be some agreement with his comments down in the comments, maybe some agreement with what I've had to say in this video. But I definitely felt like I had to make a video like this, especially with vaccine, vaccines, pretty much um, vaccinations pretty much getting underway over the last couple months. And with a guy like Montez Sweat, who, of course, watched football team fans know, um, made those comments a couple weeks earlier. And now Cole Beasley getting a... Uh, a lot of traction yesterday on Twitter for his comments. I felt like I had to make this video and I'm glad I made it. And um, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Maybe learn a, a thing or two in the video. And um, yeah, I hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe to the DMV Sports Zone channel as much um, if you can. And also make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to all of our videos on this channel. We try to put out good content on here. Also go and follow our Twitter page and Instagram page, all lowercase DMV Sports Zone. Try to put out some good content on there as much as possible as well. But uh, that being said, thank you guys again so much for watching. I know this is a different video. It's about COVID-19, the vaccine, and Cole Beasley's comments from yesterday. But again, I felt like it had to be made and um, I'm glad it was made. <laughs> so thank you guys so much and see you on the next one. Peace.